billion rupees. And for the nine month period, international sales are at 51.6 billion rupees, a gain of 20%. The manufacturing, operating, and construction costs have risen by 9% in the quarter 3 ended 30th of December and by 6% for the nine month period. <coughs> the fact that the manufacturing, construction, and operating costs have increased by a percentage lower than the sales growth indicates that the inherent profitability or the contribution towards profitability uh, has improved and that is very much evident in the growth in the EBITDA number. Staff cost for the quarter is up by 15% and for the 9 months is up by 19%. Uh, a portion of the staff cost increase is due to almost 3,700 people that we have added year on year between December of the FI 13 14 versus December of 12 13. Uh, we have also been taking more of overseas jobs as is evident from the order in Chromex. Consequently, the staff deployed for executing overseas projects is on the rise and that involved additional allowances to support them and their living overseas. Uh, we have also had our normal revisions during this period and all of that combined together reflected in the entries that you see. As the order book is doing, it is very important for us to beef up our execution teams and to that extent, the addition to the staff, apart from contributing to the operation, also is very important from the company strategy of converting orders into profitable sales. Sales administration other expenses are by 13 to 10 for the quarter ending uh, December and uh, for 9 month period is up by 25 percent. In the previous years, as you might recall, there have been releases of certain warranty provisions on completion, successful completion of large jobs like the Delhi Airport, which depressed the numbers of the previous year. So, in contrast, you do see a 25% increase on the 9-month period and 13% for the quarter, but the actual increases are possibly at half that level. The EBITDA consequently is up by 30% for the quarter end of December at 16.75 billion rupees and for the 9 month level up by 14% at 37.52 billion rupees. The interest expenses have gone up by 24% during the quarter and 12% during the 9 month period reflective of larger funds employed in the businesses as well as increasing interest cost environment in which we operate. The fact that the EBITDA margins for Q3 improved by 186 basis points and uh, by nearly 50 basis points for the 9 month period provided that extra cushion for the company to absorb the additional interest cost on account of largest funds of consumption. Depreciation has been representative of the capital expenditure that has been uh, resident in our books. So uh, a 12% increase and 9% increase is in order. The other income uh, at 4.47 billion rupees for the quarter and 13.99 billion rupees for the nine monthly period uh, has registered 20% and 10% decrease over the corresponding quarter 3 and corresponding quarter 9 <coughs> nine months of the previous year. Uh, the components of the other income is largely the dividend income from subsidiary companies as well as the treasury gain that we have had by operating our temporary cash surpluses. The previous year's numbers included one-time gain on sale of properties that the company had in surplus and uh, hence accordingly they are not uh, uh, residing in the current year numbers and that explains the variance that you see in these numbers. After providing for requisite taxes, the recurring profit after tax for the quarter 3 is at 11.37 billion rupees, a growth of 12% over Q3 of the previous year and at 26.65 billion rupees, a growth of 3% over the corresponding 9 month period. If you recall, we were lagging behind at the half yearly level on the recurring profit after tax and the 12% growth in quarter 3 has helped us draw even in terms of the 9 month results. We did have an exceptional income of 1 billion rupees in terms of sale of stake in one of our subsidiary companies and accounting for that, the profit after tax for the quarter 3 is at 12.41 billion rupees and for the 9 months is 27.69 billion rupees. Consequently, the increase of profit after tax for the quarter 3 is at 22% and for the 9 month period is flat. Looking at the segment, uh, 
the segment that we uh, publish and uh, uh, report are into these buckets, infrastructure for nuclear digital imaging, and heavy engineering, electrical automation, machinery industrial products and others. So these are the broad businesses uh, which constitute these segments. And going forward, when we talk about the segment revenues and segment margins, it is in the context of these businesses that we run. Looking at the segment profile, uh, of the order inflow uh, of 674 billion rupees, 82% is from infrastructure sector. There is a very clear indication of where the investment is happening uh, in the country and outside of the country, in the markets we participate. Uh, it is in the area of transportation infrastructure, it is in the area of heavy civil, and it is in the area of power transmission and distribution. All of that constitutes the infrastructure segment for us. Uh, we uh, do see a uh, slowdown in uh, our sector. Uh, there are hardly a, any worthwhile order to report, so consequently you find that as a 2% share of the order and so. Minerals and metals and material handling is just one share better at 3% of the order and so composition. Heavy engineering at 4% and all the other businesses put together at 9% complete the fight. In so far as the order book is concerned of 1,71,000 crore, 76% of this backlog needs to be executed in the area of infrastructure, followed by power at 9%, followed by material handling and minerals at 8%, heavy engineering at 4 and the rest at 3. Looking at the segmental performance, the infrastructure segment, which as you can see is the largest segment that we run, uh, we've had uh, net revenue from that segment at 87.8 billion rupees, a growth of 24% over the quarter three of the previous year. For the nine month period, the segmental revenue at 211 uh, billion rupees is a 27% growth over the 166 billion of the nine month period of the previous year. The margins have also risen well. Uh, they at the quarterly level have risen by 110 basis points from 10.3% to 11.4%. And for the nine month period, they have risen by just under 1% from 11.2 to 12.1. The good news about this segment is it is not only contributing to the inflow of orders, but it is also contributing handsomely to the growth of revenues and also contributes to the market. So it's been a story of profitable growth uh, for the company so far in this year. When it comes to segments of car, uh, we see a decline in the revenues. It's reflective of the declining order book that we have. We have not been winning power sector orders, not because we are losing them, uh, by buckets, but the opportunities are very limited. This uh, segment is constrained uh, at, at, at several sectoral levels. Uh, some of them involving policy, some of them involving financial restructuring and the availability of capital. Uh, 